for Triangle Convention. I'm Bernie, um, and I am here today with the legendary Cat Burrell, <laughs> um, who we all know as our lovely new appointed sheriff and Woo! half of Way Hot. Hi, Cat. How are you doing today? Hi, Bernie. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing well. <laughs> um, heads up for everyone watching at home, we may be discussing things that happen in 410, so just as a heads up for spoilers for folks who haven't watched it yet um we'll try and keep it as spoiler free as possible um, will we okay so does that mean i'm not allowed to talk about it you can talk about it they've okay. been warned they've been warned okay <laughs> been warned. <laughs> okay great um so i think something that everyone needs to know right off the bat right off the bat is um how is bernie doing he's great you see him? Yeah. He, there he is. He's Hello. great. He just got back from a hike. He's really living his best life right now. Honestly, like he, he, we had a little home spa yesterday. He's great. Yeah, he's he's awesome. Sick. He can't um, complain. You better not complain. Uh, no, I'm not just talking about myself in the third person. Um, <laughs> so something I, I genuinely want to start off with, um, is a huge part of Winona Earp is found family. Um, I was wondering, what family member would Nicole be within the Earp family? For example, you have like the drunk uncle, um, the cool aunt. Like, I'm curious what you think. I, I feel like Nicole would be the parent. Is parent an option? A parent is so an option, yeah. Okay, I favorite. feel like Nicole would be the parental, um, not like in a not cool way, but Nicole's sort of, you know, like in charge of things, very parental, very much a caregiver, very kind of steady. And I think Nicole is a, um, a rock and a safe harbor. And I think that's what a good parent is. Um, maybe not always in the most popular way, but always when you need them. And I think that very accurately describes Nicole. Definitely, and I think we've yeah. seen a lot of that between her and, and Rachel this season, mm -hmm. um, which yeah. has been super fun. That dynamic. I love that relationship. I really loved the uh, the uh, um, <clears throat> the scene we had last episode in the basement between the two of them. I thought that was a really lovely moment. I had such a good time shooting that with Martina, and I um I I just really like seeing that energy from Nicole. I also think it's been so apparent this season how much she needs to do that, to fill that role for someone. It's very much a part of her and what she needs to feel like herself as it is good for, helpful for other people too. So I think it's, it, it, it's, it's a nice cyclical kind of energy. Definitely. Yeah. Um... Yeah, the, the one line that I loved during that scene was, um, well, if you were gay, we would, we would support you and buy you the right albums. The albums? Okay. Yeah. Genius. Um, yeah. For Nicole growing up, I'm curious who you think Nicole's celebrity crush would have been. Oh my gosh, I'm so bad at pop culture questions. You're good, you're good. This is a good one. Oh my gosh. I don't know, like probably, I can't really think of like a, I'm trying to think of a celebrity that was around when Nicole was a kid. So I'm trying to do like a lot of weird math. Um, But I think, I think, I think Nicole is attracted to like sweetness. I think Waverly is very much the embodiment of her ideal person. And I think, um, I think like, sweet but smart maybe like oh my gosh i see whenever i get asked these questions i feel like i've never watched a day of television in my life like my mind right. just like panics yeah because i i have this um i'm like so bad at, at picking a person but i think if i was to describe them and bernie maybe you can help me out with some i think honestly i think my and bialik and blossom I think. Oh yeah, or, that's a nice one. Okay, yeah. yeah, that or Willow and Buffy. I think those Buffy. would be the two top. Yep, great. Yes, I agree with both of those answers. Those are brilliant. We we got them and together. I steal them. 
<laughs> can I still look for the future? Yes, well, kind of, but I feel like uh, that's genius. Those are, yeah, those are totally great. Yeah. Uh, a question that um, a lot of herbers have been uh, wanting to ask you is uh, what it was like playing Eve to sort of, and like sort of fighting um, your friends and kind of having to be. Oh my God, it was, it was so fun. I mean, it was, I loved it. It was amazing. I really want to play more villains. It's very much something I'd love to do. Um, I'm really, I keep on putting it into the universe. I'm like, villain, villain, please bring me a villain. Um, I just find them and I learned so much about them from Michael and talking to Michael Eklund about Bobo. Because Michael plays a lot of really dark characters, but he never sees them that way. Um, and I think it was such a brilliant way to think about them like when when you play somebody who serves that archetype in a story in their world they're the hero and i think that's a really interesting metaphor for a lot of things in the world but um and people are so complicated um but i think um i think that's one of the most fascinating things about them and every time i've approached any sort of like even i play a character on working moms and she's She's a definitely a villain-esque type of character. And, uh, but for Alicia, when I play Alicia, I'm always trying to find, like, in her mind why she's right and why her feelings are justified and why she's fighting the good fight in her, in her world, in her worldview. And I think that's what makes it so fascinating. But Eva's just also so fun because... First of all, Eve, I think, was the most challenging character I've ever played because I had no crutches. Like, I had no clothes. I had no, like, even just, like, putting a hand on a desk sometimes when you're feeling unstable can really ground you. Or, like, hands in a pocket or having a prop. I love a prop because I can kind of channel my nervous energy as an actor into it and, like, get it out of my body. And... So with Eve, one of the most challenging things was just having no security blanket, literally and figuratively. And I um, really enjoyed the challenge of it and like would have loved to play in Eve for, for, for however long because it was so, such a departure from what I'm used to and it was such a challenge, but I, I really enjoyed it. And everyone was just fun to play with. And, it's also like, on what show can you get to be a different character? And we've all got these opportunities now to play different characters on the same show. And I think that's so cool as an actor, like what an amazing challenge and also just keeps everything so fresh and, and lets you come to work with completely different ideas and try new things. And it's so rare, especially when you've been on a show for how, how many years, it, it, it's so nice to try different things. So it was awesome. I loved it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and just looking at the chat, you are, um, you are being praised for it. Um, oh, people that's absolutely really adore. Thanks, um, guys. I appreciate it. And a question I've been wanting to ask since episode 409 aired was how hard was it to kick the chicken? It, I missed it once. I got like the corner of it. It was like not a good kick. We did it three times, I think, if I can remember correctly. And once a couple, the two times I got it, but it was just fun. It was such a, it was so fun. Like, and again, when you get to do stuff like that. Um, but I was a little sad. It was a real rotisserie chicken and that felt a little, but um, it was um, the fun of the scene. It was definitely like a really fun a fun uh, challenge and it was really fun. I was saying to some guys earlier, like it was, I wish there was a camera pointing the other way because the whole crew and our director, Jem was there like shaking with laughter. And it was just, it, it was fun to see everybody kind of with this, these plastic sheets and everything. It was just a really um, joyful, silly moment that we all got to laugh through. And it was a, it was a very fun memory for me. That's great. Um, yeah. How has it been working with Jem? Because She's new this season, correct? Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, and Jem comes from a sci-fi world and is such a self-professed, like, comic book geek. And I think also Tim and Jem have a really great relationship from Vagrant Queen. So we had heard so much about Jem, and so it was just really nice to also have a fresh set of eyes on the series because we, we work with amazing directors, but we have been working with the same 
because Winona is such a hard show to shoot. So um, it really makes sense that they keep on bringing the same people back because tonally it's really in a special pocket and um, we have such time constraints on the show and how many days we get to shoot things. So I think it's a lot of pressure on directors. Um, but Jem just fit right in and was so up for the challenge and also got two completely different episodes. Like tonally, just so not in the same pocket, which is, um, I would imagine would be a huge challenge. And I think just, it was just, they're so well handled and it was so cool to have a, just a, a fresh energy. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, yeah. yeah, the, the, the handling of the two different tones in the episodes, just like masterful. Right? Um, incredible. Yeah, really incredible. And I can often imagine directors must just be like, what is this show? Like, what, what is this? And I also have so many directors that I encounter in the industry who I know would, would love to work on Wayne Nerf because it is, it's like with actors. It, it's just a playground and um, everyone is so encouraged. It's a huge credit to Emily. Like everyone's so encouraged to, um, bring their creativity and and try new things and i think um it's very rare to find an environment where you're so encouraged to bring your ideas to the table because i think sometimes on certain shows it can be a very controlled environment and you just sort of feel like you're passing through but i feel on winona earth it's a really special energy and it comes right down from the top of like you know we hired you to bring you and to bring your ideas and we don't want you just trying to conform to what someone else has done. Like bring your thoughts, bring your ideas, bring your creativity. We trust you. That's why we hired you. And I think I've learned so much from watching Emily kind of create that environment and our, our producers and, and Melanie kind of create that safe space, space for creatives um, from working on this show. So I think it's been and a really good lesson moving forward for whatever I end up doing next. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's also just really nice to hear that it's such a collaborative atmosphere. Um, yeah, it really is. Because you don't always get that on, on film sets, and it's just it's really nice to hear that that's the case mm -hmm. with this show. Um, yeah, you really don't, and I think that's why whenever I work with people who know I work on my Nona Earp, there's this like, oh, that must be fun kind of feeling, which is which is special to have that the show have that relationship or that sorry reputation in the industry. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, someone in the chat wants to know if it's harder to prep for comedic episodes or serious episodes from an acting standpoint. Mm, I would say comedic. Com comedy's hard. I think it, it, comedy seems easier, but there's a rhythm, like a musicality that I find that's really important to selling comedy. And it's so much about pace and tone and timing and listening. Emotional stuff is hard too, but I think the pace of comedy is really challenging. Like, if the emotional scenes, you can kind of take a second to dip back into the pocket and find yourself again, but comedy goes so fast, and if you're not really ready, it kind of just shoots by you, and you, you don't feel like you're on the horse. Um, so for me, but I love comedy, um, and I really, like my favorite episodes have been our comedic episodes. Um, I mean, I love the emotional stuff too, but it's just, there's something so fun playing in, playing in that comedy. It's just such fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, speaking of like musicality, um, I know you come from a theater background. I'm very curious what your favorite musical is because I'm a huge musical theater buff. Are you? Oh my gosh. Oh man. I... There's so many good musicals. I feel like my musical theater taste is dated now because it's been so many years since I was in, because I went to school for musical theater for a year. Mm -hmm. Was a miserable dancer and was a, a good singer, like, but never a, I was never gonna be in a chorus. I was too tall for to be in a chorus. And then I just sort of realized that musical theater wasn't for me as a performer. So I feel like all my references are dated, but I saw most recently, uh, we saw Come From Away, and that was developed at the school that I went to, actually. Not a lot of people know it's actually Canadian, and it was developed at Sheridan College, which is where I studied. And um, 
I mean, was so proud of that show, like as a Canadian, as I just, I love shows where, I mean, this is kind of goes back to Wayne on Earth in a way, but I love show, like I love actors and I love artists and I, I love, like nothing gets me more excited than when an artist is like doing their thing. And I found with that show, it was just so cool to see these actors play so many different parts. And um, I think like we go to theater, we know it's not real. Like we don't have to, you know what I mean? Yeah. I really like stuff where we, it doesn't have to feel real because that's not the point. Like I live my real life. I don't really want to watch it. I want to watch magic. So, and I have that like same taste in film stuff, but I, I loved Come From Away. I got to see Hamilton on Broadway only because I had a friend connection and that's the, like literally the only way that I was able to get a ticket, but it was phenom phenomenal, obviously. Um, but then like, I love Into the Woods is one of my favorite musicals. I love Sondheim. It's so poetic, especially someone as someone who like studied music for years, the notation, it's almost like Shakespearean in the way that Sondheim writes because every eighth rest is a is a change of thought it's like shakespeare and so the way you can break it down as a performer there's so many clues in the music that tell you how to play the scene and i find that like nerdy investigative stuff really gets me excited so there's a lot and then there's like so much good musical theater coming out right now that i'm not as in the loop of but i um i'm really looking forward to theaters opening again yes like can't wait to go back. Um, so, I'm, yeah. I'm currently in New York, so I'm, I'm just, I'm waiting. Oh. I'm waiting for the theaters to open up again. Um, oh my gosh. Do you go and do like, if I lived in New York, I would be in those rush lines like every day. I, yeah. I, I have been known to rush a few shows in my time. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. What's your favorite? Do you have a current favorite? Um, it's a toss up between Fun Home Dear Evan Hansen and Funny Girl. It's one of those three. Uh -huh. I'm Funny Girl. Yeah. Nice. I love myself some Streisand. Um, yeah. Oh, my God. Amen to that. Yeah. Amen to that. You know what else I really loved when it when it was, it was super hot when it first came out was Spring Awakening? I loved I thought it was so great. Yeah. I loved Spring Awakening. That was another great one. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, fun. I'm super jealous, Bernie. That's so cool that you get that you're like in the, the best place for it. Yeah. So I, I, I'm very grateful for it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, something that I, I wanted to talk about, it's also in episode 409, but it's a little bit more serious. Um, Nicole stands in front of the town and says, I swear to protect every person in this town, everyone, even those who didn't like me because I'm an outsider or because I'm gay. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a feeling many of us have felt, at least like I know I definitely have. Um, within our lifetime. Um, I'm curious where you think Nicole finds the strength to be bold both in that moment and her life in general. Oh, what a great question. Um, where Nicole finds the strength to be bold. I mean, I think, such a good question. I think she finds a lot of the strength in like the people she loves. Um, I think she has such a strong protector instinct that almost, that I, I really understand that part of Nicole because I have that a lot in myself too, like a real parental like desire to protect and I don't like it when people are upset or when they're suffering or, I mean, no does nor does any decent human being it's not it's not like it's like some unique quality but i think the like injustice of that really fires nicole up and i think she's i don't know like i i i, I nicole had a tough time growing up but i i don't think it was anything I think it, she just had like a shitty family situation that didn't understand her but it wasn't about her sexuality it was about just like she in my mind she had these like super academic parents that like kind of didn't want to be parents and weren't really present and like she was just like this outdoorsy like very much like work with your hands type of person and she just didn't fit into her family fabric and I and 
So I think, I think spending a lot of your life, um, having to like, not growing up in it, sorry, I'm just putting, trying to put it, like, when you, when you feel like you don't fit into your family unit from just like a, I don't feel like I'm the same breed as you guys. Like I like different things. My energy is different. When you, when you don't have people, you have to like be really strong in who you are and kind of find your tribe along the way and find your people. And that's why I'm so glad she had her aunt and uncle, because I think in my head, those were the people who nurtured that like outdoors and like getting in touch with nature and that side of her, even though she lost them so young, I think when you have to spend your life actively seeking a place to feel more like yourself, I think it builds strong character because it doesn't come easy. And so like you really have to know to then go and seek it, if that makes sense. So I think that's a great question. I just sort of thought through it now, but but so it's a, a bit of a unclear answer. But I think I think that's where it comes from is that she's she never felt like she identified with her family unit. And so from a very early age had to be like, that's not really my style, but I really like these things. And so I'm gonna go find people and places that support that. And if that means I have to lone wolf it a little bit, then like, I'm cool with that. I think spending time alone is very powerful. I think you gotta be okay with your own company um, and like be at peace with yourself because we spend a lot of times on our on our own. And, and if you don't like who that person is, then it's very hard to let other people in. And I think she did a really good job of figuring out who that was for her and moving around a lot and, and being okay with her own company. Yeah, so. definitely. I'm sorry, that was a bit of a scattered answer, oh. but I think some things made sense. No, all of it made sense. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Awesome. You're good. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's really nice to have a character, I think, that is so self-assured, um, yeah. particularly one that's, that's queer. Yeah, um, totally. Who, like, doesn't, their story isn't about coming out. It's, yeah. it's, it's not about them being gay, which is why I think Nicole's character is just like a hundred percent so wonderful so great i agree with you a thousand percent um what else did i want to ask oh are you prepared for all of the chicken related things you're going to encounter at future cons you know what's so funny people have been asking me this today and until this day i didn't even think about it it was just sort of like a passing i was like oh that was a funny moment but now i'm realizing it may be more part of the fabric of the future of Nicole Hot and her legacy than I realized. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I'm always excited to see, you know, it's so satisfying as an artist to see what people who watch the show grab onto and elevate with their own work and creativity and what makes people happy and gives them a laugh. And like, it's just such a a gratifying process than any time I see anyone like take the kernel of an idea that's on the show and then make it into something it brings me so much joy um because it's just a beautiful energetic cycle of the sharing of creative ideas I think and yeah I mean I'm jazzed for anything but if if anyone was like I'm gonna cosplay Nicole's ring I would be like that's awesome you know like it's, yeah. anything just gets me excited yeah absolutely yeah. um if people in the chat are also asking um i see your questions folks don't worry um if you noticed everyone changing their profile pictures to chickens after it happened no i didn't did they i saw a few but i didn't notice like a trend yes it was oh. um was it I'm not, i just really 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 took to um nicole chicken kicker um love it i love it and I don't know how you're going to answer this without giving away anything, but people are asking okay. me to ask it, so I will ask it um, okay. for the fans. Um, at the end of episode 410, we see Dark Waverly, is, as, as um, folks are uh, talking about it. Um, folks want to know... Um, what Nicole's reaction to Dark Waverly would be. I don't know if you, you like clearly can't really answer that. Yeah, I tried to answer this in a group chat earlier. Um, okay, I'm gonna give one word and the word is desperation. Okay. That's all I'm gonna say because otherwise there's good things and you guys don't want them spoiled and, but desperation. 
All right, you heard it, folks. Desperation. Desperation. Um, and as we're kind of wrapping up here, um, you brought up chickens being a part of Nicole's legacy that you didn't intend. Um, yeah. I'm curious, like, besides the chickens, what do you hope Nicole's legacy is as a character on, on the show? Oh, and gosh. This is like an essay. But what I hope... Nicole's, oh my gosh, this is such a, like, reflect, meditate question. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, I just hope, you know, I think we've seen a lot of incredible change in the past six years over the journey of the show in media, in queer representation. Um, and I know that part of Nicole's legacy is going to be a beacon of an incredibly, like you said, an incredibly complex, um, three-dimensional character with, with that finally represented so many people that felt like they hadn't seen themselves on television. And I think, what a like, like that is an incredible legacy that I am, has been an honor and a privilege to be a part of um and i think i mean that you cannot speak about nicole without talking about her her legacy as a queer character i mean she is i th i think nicole is a trailblazer i really do i f i've witnessed so and we all have witnessed so much change and there's no part of me that believes for a second that why no nerf wasn't a part of that People were paying attention to this show, even though it was a small show, even though blah, 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 and all the things that, you know, I don't care. There were people in this industry watching Winona Earp and learning from it. And it like almost makes me emotional to, to think about it, but I just feel like Nicole changed the way that queer characters were represented. I mean, and so did Waverly and Jeremy and Robin, but, but Nicole was a character that we hadn't seen as much of before. And like, I just, I know that Nicole made like a huge, a huge, huge difference. And I'm so, I'm so proud of, of, of that aspect of, um, of her. I'm just so proud of her. Yeah. I feel like she lives like, like in a universe far, far away or very close or whatever, but I have this, this theory and maybe it's my own emotional like security blanket that I think about these characters existing in another dimension like they're living right now and doing things and then we just get to dip in every once in a while and check on them and um you know i think it's been just like just the greatest privilege i'm so proud of this whole show and like everything we've done and the fandom and the kindness and i just think um yeah i just yeah all the things Thank you. Um, that was fantastic. And I can tell you that folks in the chat are saying they're crying. Um, it's, it, it's, it's, it's true. Man. It's, yeah. It is. It's true that Nicole's character has just had such a huge impact on the industry entertainment and in, on, yeah. in so many people's lives. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to send over everyone saying we love you. Thank you so love much. You guys. Um, thank you for for joining and bernie this was so awesome you're such a fantastic moderator thank you so much thank you so much kat um i really appreciate you awesome. coming and sharing and and just opening oh. your heart up it's always it's always such it's been a, it's been a privilege um yeah. so folks uh that's we're gonna wrap up this discussion but stay tuned for the pur purgatory archaeological survey um, panel that's coming up at 2.15. Um, thank you again, Kat. You are incredible. Pleasure. Pleasure. Um, you are incredible. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. And uh, we'll see you guys soon.